Okay, from the time of the exile, of the ex exile in Egypt and the exodus from Egypt, the Jewish people are called the army of God, Siva Otashem. The Jewish people are called sons of God, they're called servants of God, they're called soldiers of God, Siva Otashem. The Jewish people are called the army of God, and they're also called servants. What's the difference between a servant? A servant does what his master wants, which can be on different levels. There's some servants which are very delicate. They have to do very, very delicate craft of threading pearls, right? Very, how do you say, they're delicate and, and expensive uh, work <clears throat> or other type of expert work. Or it could be a servant that he just sweeps the floor. It, has, it could be that it means you have to exert tremendous amounts of effort and labor, but there's no self-sacrifice. Uh, willing to sacrifice yourself, to put down your life, to lay down your life, that's a servant. Soldiers are servants of God who serve with great labor, but what? Self-sacrifice. In wars of defense or attack, whether the soldier is commanded to defend or he's commanded to attack. Right? Sometimes attacking is the best defense. With self-sacrifice, right? to give a lecture to people that want to listen to you, Right, then that's uh, the very nice. You know, you you prepare, you do it well. That's like a servant of God. But to give a lecture to people who don't want to listen to you whatsoever, and you have to somehow or other overcome all these obstacles. And sometimes it might even be dangerous. They'll scoff at you, they'll laugh at you, they'll embarrass you, they'll shame you. It's a big thing nowadays, shaming people, shaming people. It's all over the place. And the whole woke movement is based on shaming people. You shame, you don't hold my feet. Shame on you, right? So, so you have to have self-sacrifice. A soldier stands their post with the highest degree of determination, undeterred by the opposing enemy. The service is not one of understanding. They do, all they do is what the commander wants. The Jews in Egypt were the lowest level and they had tremendous, uh, severe affliction. The Jew, the Egyptians made this avodah kasha, but despite it all, they stood with self-sacrifice. They did not change their names, they did not change their language, and they did not change their distinctive clothing. The Egyptians almost didn't wear any clothing at all. So it's, it's like in, in America, it's more and more revealed and more and more, uh, what is it, decadent and licentious and everything like that. And they didn't change their names. With absolute determination, they stood at their posts, for they knew that God had promised to redeem them. <laughs> in Israel, they tried to make it that everybody would change their names. They would make it, but at the end of it, they changed their names also to names that only Jews would have, right? Only Jews are called Erez or whatever, you know, the, uh, Tzachki, whatever that is. But wh whoever behaves as they did under such circumstances as a soldier is a soldier in the army of God. And the Almighty uh, God will come to is your assistance in a matter that manifests itself in nature, but above nature. If you are self-sacrificing for God, then God will be self-sacrificing, so to speak, from you. He'll come from his spiritual, normal nature and come and help you. That's the whole story of Abraham. The whole story of Abraham, God gave Abraham 10 tests. The tests, each one demanded a different type of self-sacrifice to go above and beyond his understanding and his comfort zone and to endanger himself, his future, his reputation, his riches, his family, endanger everything. And Abraham was willing to do it. That's the essence of what a Jew is. Let's have a good day with Mashiach now, and we'll have questions. Anyone who wants to have questions, let's go offline here.